Okay, this is the work of regeneration taking place. And, and it's that ongoing work that, which is the cleansing of the conscience. That's the, uh, uh, the, circumcision, the circumcision of the heart which takes place by the work of the Spirit. So this isn't uh, uh, this isn't self-justification by any means, okay? Which uh, you know a lot of people obviously use that uh, to defend their principles, okay? But he's talking about reflecting upon that work of the work of Christ in the heart. Now the dead works uh, brought defilement, um, from which we must now be cleansed. So we worked with those things in the past. Uh, in expectation of God entering into them and taking notice of our desire to please him with those things. Okay, we only found them to be dead works after considering the outcome of them in comparison to our new experience after entering into covenant with God and being joined to him daily through his spirit, right? We had good intentions with those things. Okay? We did not uh, we did not think that we were uh, that we were fighting against God. We didn't think that we were offending God. Okay, and yet we were, okay, we were, because th those things were outside of Christ. Those things were not what he has sanctified for our faith, okay, and so we brought offense to God. Um, I'm just looking for a, make a typo fix there. Okay, let me go on. Um, so here also when he talks about speaking evil of you, now, uh, that has to do with accusing you of being uh, out of step with modern flattery, okay, which you are, all right? We, you know, we are out of step with that. Um, or in other words, they might say, you hurt my feelings, and then say that with the love of God, right? Um, and Jesus suffered exactly the same thing, which is the, uh, the VHP factor, we call it, vulnerability, humiliation, and pain, okay, which we all experience. This is a common experience of the righteous. Okay, we see this uh, in John chapter 10, verse 32, John 10, 32. For Jesus answered them, uh, many good works have I showed you from my Father, for which of these works do you stone me? Okay, right? He suffered the same thing, didn't he? Uh, now he says they uh, they speak evil of you as evildoers. Okay? Uh, they call you faithless because you do not join them in their dead works of, of uh, contrition, okay, which they use to try and free their conscience from guilt. Okay, you're not confirming... Uh, their principles, okay? You're not embracing their false doctrines, okay? And they're looking for you to confirm them, okay? We're confirming Christ, so that's an offense to them, okay? And so they'll call us faithless because we're not following uh, the pattern that they've established for faith outside of Christ, okay? And they're calling that Christ. Again, it's not because, uh, you know, they're not trying to contradict God, okay? But they are because they are, they're refusing uh, his grace. They're resisting his grace and truth. Okay, they're actually uh, drawing upon their their private interpretation of things, okay, and their own understanding of things in order to say, no, we don't need, uh, we don't need God to teach us anything new. Okay, what, you know, the Bible, the canon is closed, you hear people say, things like that, right? Or we don't need any man to teach us. Okay, but the Lord has always worked through knowledge stewards, hasn't he? Okay, and I didn't uh, I didn't choose for myself, okay, uh, to uh, you know to follow after you know anybody, okay. But as uh, as the Lord, you know, I was I was praying for truth when I came in when I was uh, introduced to uh, Chief Apostle Eric, okay. I was crying out to God for truth, okay, and I was introduced to him, and and the things that he shared with me, okay, that 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 edification, okay, that impact of grace was present with these things, okay, and I couldn't deny Christ in this knowledge. Okay, I wasn't in agreement with all of these things uh, at first because, you know, it was all, you know, very new to me, and I, I kind of, uh, you know, struggled with these things, but I, I couldn't deny that, that edification, okay, and that wasn't anything that uh, Chief Apostle Eric was doing, okay, I was sitting there in Iowa, okay, and he was in Michigan at the time, okay, it wasn't, uh, you know, he wasn't doing anything to, uh, you know, set the stage or the scenario or the lighting or the music or anything like that. He was just sharing knowledge, right? Okay, and Christ was in that knowledge. That the grace of God was present with that knowledge to draw faith from my heart, and I could not, I, I could not uh, resist Christ. Okay, 
uh, and the same thing uh, is is what we experience every day with the tools okay with the knowledge okay that this that Christ is in these things okay and we don't we didn't choose these things for ourselves we submitted ourselves over to this knowledge and these tools okay and God has always provided that witness okay so again it's not like well uh, you know you just uh, have your own private interpretation we don't at all okay this you know, this was not my private interpretation Okay, this is what the Lord has revealed for faith. Okay, and I know that to be true because the Father continues to confirm that to me every single day. Okay, so this isn't what I think, it's what I know. I remember explaining that to a reporter one time that was uh, that was asking questions about things. That was a long, long time back. I think, I don't even remember if it ended up being published in a local paper or what, but she, you know, obviously got the story kind of mixed up. But I remember explaining that, you know, that... that uh, there's absolutely no question in my mind that this is truth because the father confirms it, but she didn't understand that, you know, having no, uh, no experience with that. But let me go on here. So they will confirm those things that confirm themselves, won't they? And they will condemn others who confirm Christ. Same thing the Pharisees did. And again, the Pharisees thought, okay, that they were doing the will of God, didn't they? That they were fully convinced that they were doing the will of God. Okay, they, they searched the scriptures daily. Okay? They weren't neglecting the reading of the scriptures, okay? but they were not working with the Spirit of God. They weren't working with His grace. Okay? They were working with another power. Okay? Even though they were reading the scriptures, they were reading the same scriptures that Jesus was sharing with them. Okay? Jesus was unfolding to them okay, with authority concerning those very same scriptures, and yet they chose to, to continue to work with their own private interpretation. Okay? Even though you know, the author of those things was there to to explain things to them well yeah you know that uh, you think the author might be able to help you understand something that you misread yeah you know I think I think he can so but they refused that didn't they they refused that correction uh, and they will accuse you of stealing from the Lord okay by not giving your tithe to them okay and for forsaking God by not observing the Sabbath day okay we see the same thing took place with Jesus okay uh, this is just as the uh, the Judaizers uh, of the first century did, okay, as they were teaching Gentile believers to be circumcised in the flesh. Okay, the same thing was taking place then, and the same thing goes on today. As sinners persecute those who are following the tradition of faith, uh, which is set by Christ, as opposed to observing the religious tradition set by man uh, after the flesh, such as the the you know the carnal communion. Uh, um, or, you know, the water baptism or whatever it may be. Uh, so precept in line uh, will always contradict Christ, okay, because by it they mix faith with their aspiration and they defile both themselves and all those who uh, find agreement with them, okay. But grace and truth restricts the principle and the aspiration and remains in step with the rhythm of God, okay. This is what it means to die daily, okay. I had to... Uh, die to myself in order for Christ to live. For my faith to be made living by God, I had to die to myself, which means uh, the principle and the aspiration had to be subjected uh, to truth and grace, didn't they? Okay? The principle has to be replaced with truth, okay? And aspiration has to be replaced with faith, okay? And the imagination has to be brought within the, the, the uh, has to be tamed, okay? And brought within the restrictions of the covenant. Okay, that uh, that by faith we learn okay how to work within uh, the boundaries that God set for our faith okay and that our hearts are preserved within these walls okay not without these walls okay within these walls that God set these boundaries and these boundaries uh, you know it sounds like a, a uh, and it is a restriction okay but it sounds like a burden or an oppression but it isn't because it actually frees us to exercise our faith. Okay, because we're no longer struggling with confusion or doubt as concerning what's pleasing to God. Okay, God has made it perfectly clear to us what's pleasing to God. And so we can freely exercise our faith with these things, okay, which is incredible. So we can, we can abound in grace and peace, right? We can abound in his mercy. Okay, we don't longer have to struggle in those, those, uh, the way we did in the past, okay, which, which actually resulted in, in you know, nothing of any benefit to us. Okay, so let's go on here. Uh, verse 17, For it is better, if the will of God be so, that you suffer, suffer for well-doing than for evil-doing. Okay, it's better. All right? In other words, he's speaking of value here. 
There's no value in suffering for evil doing. Okay, both the sinner and the saint suffer. Okay, no question about it. But the wicked suffer in vain, don't they? Okay, just as adorning uh, through imitation and emulation does not make a heart full of faith. Okay, or in other words, showing forth a a shield or a forte. Okay, in order to present yourself in a certain light. Okay, that's what having adorning through imitation and emulation. Okay, in order fake it till you make it type of thing. That does not make a heart full of faith, does it? Okay, so also, uh, does the suffering of the world prove to be powerless in the purging of the conscience? Okay, apart from faith. All right, so the, the, the great deal of suffering that takes place in the world isn't, isn't uh, uh, working regeneration in the hearts of the people, is it? Okay, why? Because it's not according to righteousness. But by faith, we are weighing the value of these facts and choosing to overcome by the ordered activity of faith in Christ. Okay, so that so that by faith, okay, there uh, we are benefiting by overcoming. Okay, we're we're benefiting by the, the tools that we use. We're, our choices of faith are being rewarded by God. Okay, we're increasing in His substance, the substance of Christ in the soul. Okay, uh, so if the will of God be so, that has to do with that Peter isn't saying that our suffering is optional. Okay, it's not optional. Um, but we know that the will of God is for our fruit bearing and that we are in the time uh, of his plan in which we must endure suffering by faith to bear forth fruit, uh, to bear forth his fruit in our hearts. Okay, without contradiction, there could be no testing and without testing, there could be no reward and therefore no fruit. So these things which we suffer are according to the will of God okay, and the purpose of his fulfilling his plan in us through Christ. So what's Peter saying then? Okay, well, He's saying that we didn't initiate our own suffering. Okay, God initiates the scenarios of our testing. Okay, we're not looking for ways to bring ourselves into positions of suffering uh, or trying to create contrary scenarios for us to overcome. Okay, we are simply exercising ourselves daily with His knowledge and tools as we labor at the altar. Okay, with faith and charity. It's that simple. Okay, and God, <clears throat> God unfolds the scenario, and regardless of the scenario, and this, this is. Uh, really remarkable regardless of the scenario of our testing uh, our overcoming is always the same isn't it okay we continue in faith uh, we continue in faith and charity and we overcome okay. when does that change when is the priesthood not enough never okay the priesthood is, is always sufficient for overcoming because Christ is sufficient okay this is what it means uh, that grace is sufficient okay that, uh, that that which God has revealed to us is concerning Christ Okay, it's concerning the covenant, as concerning the tools, okay, as concerning this framework, okay, is always sufficient. Okay? We need not reach outside of Christ or outside of that which God has revealed to us. Therefore, you need not reflect, uh, uh, project. You need not project, okay, uh, because all things that are necessary for our overcoming and for our fruit bearing and for our regeneration and for the increase of his substance in our hearts, okay, all things that are necessary for that are found in Christ found in the priesthood. Okay, it's the priesthood that joins us to Christ daily. Okay, absolutely. Uh, this is the great simplicity of Christ, which is which is uh, absolutely incredible. Um, and just for the sake of uh, continuity, I'm going to stop here because uh, the next uh, the next verse here works better. Uh, it, it makes a good stopping point. So I'm going to go ahead and stop here. And uh, we'll pick up here next week.